feel like it's all the hype right now to be dairy free with every man and his dog jumping on the trend. Okay, Kali is dairy free, but that's not my point. I did a poll on my Instagram stories last week and hundreds of you said that you would like to know more information on whether it's worth going dairy free to help you balance your hormones. So that's why I've created this video for you today. Sure, going dairy free is great in theory as a precautionary measure, but I know that some people really struggle to cut it out completely and therefore you don't want to do it unless it's actually going to be worth it. But on the other hand, if it's really ruining all of your hard work in trying to balance your hormones, then you'd want to know, right? I swear, bad advice on the internet has us fearing almost every type of food at one point or another. So there's no point cutting out something unless there is scientific evidence and reasoning for it. So let's look into the science behind whether dairy actually does affect your hormones so that rather than telling you to cut it out and expecting you to just trust me like everyone else on social media, you can instead take the action in cutting out dairy, truly knowing the science behind how and why you're doing so to benefit you and your hormones. I'm Madison Don't and I'm a biologist and hormone coach who has not only cleared my own severe cystic acne and reversed my PCOS naturally, but now I get to help all of my beautiful clients balance their hormones and clear their symptoms too. To jump straight into it and spoil the end of the video, I'm just going to straight up tell you that dairy is affecting your health in more ways than one, even if you don't feel sick after having it like those with lactose intolerance or those allergic to milk proteins. What you're about to learn in this video is that unfortunately, it's still negatively impacting your health and your hormones internally. So the first reason dairy is not so great for your hormones is because it contains saturated fats and sugars, which cause inflammation in the body. And while I know you can get low fat milk, these often compensate by having even more sugar than the full fat ones. In fact, I just did a quick search of the local supermarket online and their standard milks naturally have around 12 grams of sugar per glass. That's three teaspoons of sugar. In comparison, my almond milk naturally only has one eighth of a teaspoon of sugar. Inflammation not not only puts more pressure on your cells and organs, but it also causes gaps in the wall of the intestines, which is also known as leaky gut. This lowers your defense against harmful particles and pathogens in the food you eat and the water you drink, allowing them straight into your bloodstream to cause havoc. We're talking pesticides on your vegetables, bacteria in the water you drink, and many other chemicals and microorganisms that your body would otherwise be able to ward off and pass through. Inflammation also puts the whole body into a state of stress, restricting the blood flow to organs that are not necessary in an emergency situation, such as your reproductive system. The problem here is that your body can stay stuck in this mode long-term, progressively making your hormonal imbalance worse if the inflammation is not reduced. The next reason dairy should be avoided if you are trying to balance your hormones is because dairy contains a protein called insulin-like growth factor one, or IGF-1, which stimulates the production of growth hormones in the body. This is helpful in breast milk as it increases the production of androgens, such as testosterone, to help in the development of strong bones and muscles for newborns. Biologically though, we're not designed to drink breast milk past the age of about three and cow's milk, well, that's just breast milk. Most women with hormonal imbalances also struggle with already high testosterone levels, such as those who have just come off hormonal birth control or those with PCOS, and therefore dairy can further push these levels out of normal range. Testosterone also increases sebum production, contributing to hormonal acne and in insulin-like growth factor affects blood sugar levels with studies showing that levels outside of normal range contribute to impaired glucose tolerance and a higher risk of diabetes. Another big problem for women already struggling with insulin resistance, PCOS, or weight loss. Now let's talk about the estrogen content in dairy. But first, if you're enjoying this video and learning about the importance of nutrition in balancing your hormones, then I highly encourage you to look into my Balance Your Hormones ebook, where I share everything you need to know about what to eat for your hormones, as well as how to support your gut health, lower your cortisol levels, exercise to lose weight while keeping your hormones balanced, and all of the other things that come with naturally and holistically balancing your hormones. I'll put a link in the description below if you want to check it out. And like this video, do know that all of the natural solutions in that book are all backed by actual science. The reference list at the end is size nine font and still multiple pages long. Okay, so as promised, let's now talk about how dairy can also increase your estrogen 
levels and cause estrogen dominance. Firstly, dairy contains its own estrogen with levels especially high in the milk of pregnant cows. And in commercial farming practices, cows are pregnant for most of the year. Therefore, the chances of your milk having these higher levels of estrogen is very likely. And while there have been studies conducted on mice showing no effects of these estrogens alone, this study has a lot of people concluding that dairy has no effect on our levels at all, without taking into consideration that this study only tested the impacts of estrogen in dairy after eight days, which is barely enough to truly assess the effects of dairy as most people have been consuming it their whole lives or for at least longer than eight days. What's more is that the same study actually found that the rats given higher levels of estrogen did display elevated estrogens in their blood, increased uterus weight in females and decreased testosterone levels in males. Therefore, when we actually think about it, it makes more sense to compare a lifetime of dairy consumption to eight days of high estrogen dosage than it does to only consider those rats who consumed a normal amount of dairy for only those eight days. Not to mention that this doesn't even take into consideration all of the other impacts of dairy discussed in this video and their effects combined, or the effects of the estrogen levels in milk on women who are already estrogen dominant. Secondly, when testosterone levels are high, the body also responds by converting these into estrogen. So if dairy already promotes high testosterone levels, as we spoke about previously, then not only are our estrogen levels increasing directly due to the estrogen in dairy products, but also as a result of our body trying to rid the excess testosterone, thus converting it into more, you guessed it, estrogen. I mean, it's pretty much one big hormone shit show. Our gut is also largely responsible for the metabolism and breakdown of our estrogens and therefore any dairy products that contain antibiotics due to commercial farming practices will also impair your gut health, therefore also reducing the breakdown and excretion of excess estrogens resulting in further dominance. Which leads me to my next point and that is that another way dairy can impact your hormones and overall health has to do with the way that it is farmed. Commercial dairy farms these days have evolved many shortcuts that allow them to save money while producing more, thus also making them more money and increasing their overall profits. I mean, if we look at the business side of things, sure, that's smart. But the downside is that these shortcuts in the farming industry just end up significantly impacting our health. A few examples include feeding the animals genetically modified foods and grass that has been covered with pesticides to minimize the cost of upkeep. Animals are also given antibiotics to maintain their health instead of looking after them properly in the first place with quality food and a hygienic environment. Commercially farmed animals are also given growth hormones themselves because at the end of the day, the bigger they are, the more they produce and the more money that can be made. Therefore, as with any food that is farmed, especially animal products, it is always best to choose organic, hormone-free, grass-fed and antibiotic-free produce. Another big mistake I see people make when when cutting out dairy is that they think lactose-free products are dairy-free and they're not. Lactose-free just means that they've put the digestive enzyme lactase in the product to eat up all of the lactose before it is able to upset your stomach. All of the other harmful properties of milk that we've talked about in this video are still in there, therefore still impacting your health and hormones. So what's the best way to fix this then? Find dairy-free substitutes that you enjoy that don't come from an animal at all, such as almond milk, coconut milk, there's even dairy dairy-free chocolate, ice cream, cheese, sour cream, you name it. In fact, I cover all of my helpful tips on going dairy-free with ease in this video here. And not only do I share my simple tips on how to make living dairy-free, effortless and sustainable, but I also share my hacks for eating out with dietary requirements. And if you've learned something new in this video, then it would mean the world to me if you would like this video below and even leave a little comment as they really make my day and help support my channel by letting the YouTube algorithm know that this video is worth recommending recommending to others. But that's all from me for today. I wish you all the health and happiness and I will see you in my next educational video.